Welcome back to the IBJJF podcast. My guest today is Lucas Lepre. Lucas is a six-time world champion, a three-time Nogi world champion, a pan champion, Brazilian national champion, a member of the IBJJF Hall of Fame, and the head instructor of Lucas Lepre Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in North Carolina. Lucas, thank you for joining me. Thanks so much, Danny. Thank you very much for having me. I'm really excited for this podcast. I'm excited too. And I wanted to start off talking about your IBJJF Hall of Fame induction. We had the induction at the 2022 Worlds. It was a really special tournament because it was the first time the Worlds was back in the pyramid for a couple of years. And your Hall of Fame class was really special too. You had the Mendez brothers, Bia Mesquita, Bernardo Faria, Andre Galval, yourself. What did it feel like to be inducted into the IBJJF Hall of Fame back in June? Yeah, so first, you know, I was really happy to be able to be at the pyramid again after a couple of years without having the World Championship over there. So first, I was very happy, you know, to to have the words back over there. And uh, to be in Dr. to the Hall of Fame, I was so happy. I was waiting for that. I don't know. I wasn't sure that would be happy or not. And uh, as soon as I received the the latter uh i was so happy you know and and i couldn't be happier as well you know all the the members you know was in dog by my side was was uh was a great guy you know great athletes great persons as well um uh, so i'm i was very happy to to be able to be on this select group I wanted to ask you about that a bit more. You mentioned the members and how that was a special group. And it's just a special group overall because there's not that many people in the Hall of Fame, not that many competitors. So what do you feel about being a part of such a small select group of jiu-jitsu competitors that are going to go down in history? Yeah, so I'm very grateful to be part of this selected group. Uh, you know, it means a lot. I have been training, you know, for the entire uh, life uh for it you know and uh so you know like as soon as uh back on the days you know as soon as the fjgf start the hall of fame and how we couldn't be uh selected uh you know like my focus uh you start you know for that right i start okay so let me break records on my uh wage vision you know and so maybe you know for that i can i couldn't be selected to this group you know but also it's not just about that you know i think it's the, the about like how you carry yourself as well you know how you help the community you know how you can grow with that you know i think that you know like i think there's a lot of elements uh together you know that uh we couldn't be selected, right? And uh, yeah, so I worked so hard for for be in this group. You know, I did my best of my athlete career, and I'm so grateful to be part of it. Yeah, you've done so much for the jiu-jitsu community, and I feel like that's a huge part of your legacy. And another thing that was really cool about the 2022 Worlds was that Alliance won its 13th world title. And you're obviously a huge part of Alliance. You have your academy and so many students. How did it feel to win another world title as part of the Alliance team? Yeah, so it was great. Always was great. You know, like uh, we have been winning the the title for Alliance for so many years, you know, together. Uh, and, uh, I'll, you know, I was very happy to be able to be inducted to the how a fan and have the the world title you know as a team as well right and uh you know that is my next phase of my life you know help the team help my students the team the community you know and to grow right so that is like you know uh the focus now you know help others helping you know to grow even more the sport in yeah, a good way Absolutely. And you have so much to add to all your students. You have so much experience in competition. And one of my favorite parts about your career was that you won your first world title in 2007. You're in your early 20s. And then your second world title didn't come until 2014. So you're in your late 20s. There were a few years that went by. What was that period like between your first and second world title? And were there any moments where you doubted that you'd be able to win a second one? 
Yeah, so I think that's the hardest uh, part of my my career because uh, I won, you know, the first one, as you said, I was 22 years old, you know, I just, I was maybe like seven months old as a black belt and, uh, and then took like this long gap, you know, to get my second world title. And, uh, and the inside, I, I knew it that I was able, I was possible to, to get it, you know, again, right? And uh, I didn't doubt myself, you know, like every year I say, okay, so I mistake here, let me fix and come back stronger for the next year. So every year that like was so close, was so close, I was like, you know, uh, taking second place, third place, you know, always there. I knew it. I was able to get again, you know, and um, so and then I had like a mission. I have a focus, you know, in anything that wasn't able to distract me, you know, that is like my my mission. Right. And the perseverance that I I had, you know, to achieve like what I achieve, you know, that's is like I want to like everybody, you know, see that and make sure that everybody can do it. You know, with perseverance and persistence, uh, consistency as well, you know. And, uh, yeah, so that's, like, for me, you know, maybe others was, they, like, saying, hey, Lepre was, like, almost dead, you know. And then, you know, but, you know, like, maybe some, some always have some people that's going to doubt about, you know, you, right? But you have to follow your heart, you you know, like if you know that you wanna, you're gonna be able to get there. Just follow the feeling that you have it. Your first world title, like I mentioned, was 2007. Your last one was 2019. Six total. Did you have a favorite world title or a favorite run to the gold medal? Yes, uh, I think the the first one always a special one. You know, always a special one. The first one, um, always memorable. Also, I think, I don't know, man, every world title is a, is a different phase of life, right? The second one was super special as well because as you guys can see on the video, as soon as I won, I just did this, you know, because release released everything that, you know, for the seven years that I was, I was fighting system to get the the title again i couldn't get it and then i was filing you know i was in the final and be able to win uh was amazing feeling was amazing feeling was thing that i showed to myself that i was able to get on the first place again you know so that was super special um and the third one was really nice as well because uh in 2016 i got dismotivated i I almost I didn't fight the words, so and then I had my my uh, better performance, you know, in 2016. Uh, so I had four five, uh, five fights, submitted four fights, and then I didn't have any point square. I, I guess me so that I was like you know almost almost perfect, right? Uh, so I think that was the best words that I had in 2016 about my performance, you know, but as I said, and then I had, and then I, I, 2017, I broke the records. I, I achieved my fourth one that was super special as well, because, you know, I broke the records for the lightweight division. And then 2018, my, uh, wife was pregnant on that time. I couldn't be able to train the way that I, I would like it because every time that I was training, most of the time, not every time, but most of the time I was training and my wife called the academy, hey, I'm feeling sick, and then I have to go home. So uh, so that was pretty tough for me to train, you know. Uh, in 2019, I knew that was my last one. And then I just did because of my daughter. I said, man, I was imagine visualize myself on the podium with her. I said, man, it would be so cool to go to party with her that was really special i knew that was my last one uh so as soon as i i did i won i said man 
that was an amazing feeling, you know, unique feeling that I stepped in the party with my daughter. That will be forever on our memories. That's amazing. You had so many great runs at the Worlds. And one of my favorite performances of yours actually came at the 2019 Europeans. You ended up getting silver in the absolute and silver in your division. But the open class was specifically very memorable for me. You had an amazing fight with Kainan Duarte, awesome fight with Gustavo Batista. What motivated you to step into the open class at that point in your career? And is that a special moment to you as well? Yeah, I think it's pretty was pretty cool running, you know, even though that I didn't win was but it was a good challenge, you know. I like to challenge myself, even though like I go to the opens and then I'm a lightweight division. It's pretty tough you know, to get a big guys. Um so but it was a, a good challenge. It was a good challenge. Uh so I, I fought really well on Saturday. Uh, but Sunday I didn't do much, even though like I got to the final as well on my weight division, but I didn't feel good the entire day. You know, I was feeling tired, fatigued, but it was good experience. You know, I can say that I learned so much from it, you know, uh, face really good guys as well. Um, so it was a good challenge. You know, I, I, I grew so much and then, um, uh, that pushed me as well to fight the words you know i knew that you know i said man what if i just my division the words i can perform better i can do my best you know and then i can win as well so that was was another extra push how tough was it to go through the open class and your weight division as a lightweight you fought some massive guys to be able to do both at the same time concurrently and have the energy to do both finals how difficult was that yeah, so that is like what I'm saying is about like it's very because to get the lightweight division, I have to do diet, I have to prepare myself, cutting weight, you know, and it's not it's not easy for me as well. And uh, cutting weight and fight the open was was pretty tough, and then I have to cut like four more pound, pounds for the next day as well. So I couldn't, you know, eating the way that I would like to eat to recover for the next day. Uh, I don't fight the Opens much, you know. Uh, so I just, I fought the Open, the Pan Ams, 2017. And then I fought uh, the Europeans, you know. Uh, for words, one time I almost jumped at the words at the Open as well. But I was prioritizing my uh, weight division. So I was kind of scared to get hurt, you know, and uh, that's why I never joined the the open class at the awards. Uh, but uh, yeah, so you have like you have this, you know, you have to take a risk, you know, to get some something in life. A lot of times you have to take a risk and see what happened. It ended up paying off. You won the 2019 Worlds, and then shortly after that, we had the pandemic, which put a pause on jujitsu for a bit. What was your life like after you won that world title? And what were some of the things you were working on immediately after you competed for your last time at the Worlds? Yeah, so I knew that one was my last one. I didn't have plans to fight another world championship. Um, so even though like, and then the pandemic came as well in 2020, but I knew that I didn't want to fight anymore, you know, because I think the... The priority in life, you start changing, you know, I cannot, like, I'm start getting older as well. You cannot fight forever, you know. So you have to the, the time, like, the last World Championship that I won, I was 34. Um, so now I'm going to just turn 38 uh, in, you know, on Monday. But, you know, like, as I said, I know the priority in life start changing. You know, so and then my priorities start like focus on, on the academies, on the association, give them even more attention that I'm giving, you know, uh, to my family as well. You know, because when you train really hard over the years, uh, they suffer as well. They, you sacrifice a lot of time that, you know, you could stay with your family and then you have to be training. You have to do your, your conditioning. You have to rest. So, and then I start, you know, going there, prioritize my family, prioritize my academies, my team, my association as well. So 
Uh, that's just like the community, you know, start traveling all over the world, teach seminars and help the community, you know, the way that I want, uh, the way that I, 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 I want. And I see that, you know, is good as well uh, somehow, you know. So, yeah, so that's just like, you know, my focus is start going on that side and the way I am now. You know, so for these years I have been working, uh, think about, you know, uh, this, the way that, you know, I, I can uh, have a quality uh, time with my family, plus also uh, help the community as well. You've touched a few times on the contributions that you want to make to the jiu-jitsu community. And I feel like Alliance has so many strong leaders like in Fabio Grigel, Jacare, you have Cobrinha, Michael Lange. How important has their role been in helping you to have a vision for the future and to really focus on helping the community going forward? Yeah, so uh, they're leading by example. You know, uh, Fabio Grigel. Jacaré, uh, Gigi as well, you know, the founders yeah. of Alliance, you know, like they're, they're the founder and then they also like, they always show the example, you know, and then like, is that is the path that we have been following myself, Michael, Cobrinho, all, all the other guys that, you know, we, we stopped competing and then our focus to help the team, to help the community, you know, help the next generation. Um, to get there, to achieve their goals as well. Well, Lucas, thank you again for your time today. I really appreciate it. You've been a huge inspiration to the jiu-jitsu community. You won so many titles. You influenced us not only with your technique, but also with your contributions, with your teaching. So is there anyone else you want to thank before we wrap up? Yes, thanks for having me once again. Always a pleasure to be here with you all. And uh, I'd like to, you know, to thank my students, my family, for all the years of the support, my team, Alliance, my association, and and the entire co community that you know have been support myself, my 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 career, all these years. Well, thank you again, Lucas. Hopefully, we get to catch up soon. And thanks everyone for listening. We'll see you guys soon for another episode. Take care. Yeah.